Rincon Hills really a neighborhood that's under development. It's going to have lots of construction happening, lots of exciting new things that are being added all the time. CBD means Community Benefit District. Community Benefit District for Rincon Hill would be a nonprofit that helps focus needed services on Rincon Hill and it's really defined by property owners in Rincon Hill. Working on the CBD gave me an opportunity to meet other people in the neighborhood and a chance for us all to come together. And I think the thing that's great about the CBD itself and this as it continues to evolve uh, is we will continue to get a chance to meet new neighbors but also to decide on what we want to be and who we want to be as a neighborhood. A community benefit district basically provides services for a specified neighborhood that cannot be provided solely by city governments. It's self-taxing of owners in the area to provide additional services to make their neighborhoods more livable. I think it's important to support the Rincon Hill CBD because we're all in this together. We all live here, this is our neighborhood. I'd like to work with my neighbors uh, to put some money in a pot uh, and agree on the things that we all want. Just by working together, we can get to know each other and that in itself just makes for a safer, happier neighborhood. The Community Benefit District is like a homeowners association. It's a group of businesses and residents in a defined geographic area. It's like a homeowners association for, you know, a neighborhood. The proposed boundaries for the Rincon CBD are between 2nd and the waterfront, uh, Bryant Street and Mission Street. The CBD is a way for us to work and to give confidence uh, to those either businesses or homeowners as they move into a community that it's always going to be looked after. That there's an extra special group that could look out after the public areas uh, to make the community and surrounding areas be everything that we hope it is on the development side. There's an added incentive for the creation of this CBD because two years ago an infrastructure financing district was approved for the Rincon Hill area. That district enables significant dollars of specified improvements, physical improvements, to the neighborhood to be constructed. These improvements can include the Rincon Hill Park, uh, green spaces, new sidewalks, it includes new lights. However, before these funds can be spent, the city wants to be assured that there is a way to pay for the operating costs for the new improvements in the area. There has to be a mechanism to look after the, the, the new sidewalks, the new parts, etc. And that new structure is the Community Benefit District. We'll be planning parks and, and open spaces and also the programming of those, those areas and open spaces. And the CBD can take responsibility for uh, the maintenance, again, the security, uh, the cleanliness, so that when the parks are actually created, uh, that there'll be a, a group watching and responsible for the long-term preservation and maintenance of those uh, spaces. In this neighborhood, we're ground zero. <laughs> uh, the Warriors uh, are proposing an arena here at Piers 30 and 32. That's a, a huge deal. We have the Central Subway, the Transbay Terminal. What we're excited with on the Rincon Community Benefit District is connecting the Rincon Hill, which has established residential, to the new Transbay neighborhood and area, which was in the process of being built out, uh, where several thousand more residential units, office buildings, and retail will be constructed over the next 15 years and connecting it with the vibrant and uh, still growing Rincon Hill neighborhood. One thing a CBD provides the potential for is essentially a neighborhood lobbyist, which is critical to getting resources, especially these days when, let's face it, the city is going to have to do more with less and it's basically going to be, you know, the squeaky wheel is going to get oiled. So we need to squeak a little bit and the neighborhood needs to stand up and speak for itself and the CBD is the best way to do that. In terms of, you know, bang for the buck, I mean, we're asking for anywhere from 150 less than $200 a year. You're getting a ton of services. We'll have a direct contact. We'll have lines for security. So special police, how can I help you? We think that having proper security on the streets, a proper cleanliness, proper maintenance of uh, landscaping will make the area a marvelous area to live in and one which will significantly improve livability in Rincon Hill area. 
Millennium Partners is happy to be a part of the now forming Rincon Hill Community Benefit District and we look and welcome all the new development to, to the area and neighborhood over the next two decades. I think it's just one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting place in the whole city that anybody could hope to live. I'd really like to see Rincon Hill fully leverage its weather and its position on the waterfront and the view of the Bay Bridge. And this is really a happening neighborhood, but it needs some oversight and it needs some local planning, if you will. And it needs that outside of the normal San Francisco political process. And it needs something driven by the needs of residents and businesses, and that's the CBD. Being able to just call up and say, hey, you know, there's something on my street, come and check it out, and having someone come there, you know, within less than an hour, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a, a no-brainer. The formation of the CBD is, is in process. Uh, there's been monthly steering committee meetings for the CBD. There's a website for the CBD, RinconHillCBD.org, uh, where you can find meeting minutes and the next meeting date and location, and also information, just general information about community benefit districts. Residents from across the neighborhood are involved, uh, and hopefully more will get involved as we get closer to voting and hopefully forming this CBD.